would like to read a statement with regards to the recruitment of the Inspector General and the two Deputy Inspectors General of the National Police Service. The Civil Society Police Reforms Working Group wishes to commend the National Police Service Commission on the successful completion of the interviews for the top command of the police service. That is the Inspector General and the two Deputy Inspector Gen Inspectors General. We are particularly glad that the interview process upheld the principles of transparency with uninhibited participation of the public, the civil society, the media, and international observers. For this, we load the National Police Service Commission. We further recognize the extra effort the commission has expended in expediting the interviewing process, recommending the successful candidates and forwarding their names to the relevant authorities for, the, for appointment. We are appreciative of the fact that the commission worked long hours, including weekends, to ensure strict observance of recruitment deadlines. Whereas we are cognizant of the fact that the National Police Service Commission had, has had to balance various interests, including gender, academic qualifications, ex experience, integrity, and regional balance in recommending the candidates for appointment, we strongly call for a closer scrutin scrutiny of the recommended candidates with a view to ascertaining the suitability for the jobs. The police reforms working group sat through all the interviews as observers and prepared a report which was presented to the National Police Service Commission before it identified the nine individuals for appointment to the three positions. Our report interrogated the suitability of each of the 27 candidates on the basis of their integrity as outlined in chapter six of the constitution professionalism, academic qualifications, experiences, and general ability and willingness to steer forward police reforms. We have reviewed the nine names recommended for appointment and wish to state as follows. A, that we are particularly concerned that some of the recommended candidates had serious integrity and suitability issues raised against them by the public, the civil society, and other agencies during the interviews. These allegations range from corruption, drug trafficking, contempt of court processes, and their role in, in or during the 2007-2008 stroke post-election violence. As such, we call for a thorough and comprehensive review of the suitability of, of each of the recommended candidates to ensure the much-needed police reforms are steered by competent and reform-minded individuals. We call upon the National Police Service Commission to outline to the public the specific findings about on the suitability of the following. One, Ms. Grace Sombua Kaindi. What were the Commission's findings on her role during the 2007-2008 post-election violence in Kisumu, where she served as the PPO at the height of the violence? Did the Commission investigate her alleged reluctance to cooperate with the ICC in procuring evidence to prosecute the perpetrators? David Mole Kimayo. What were the Commission's findings on his role during the 2007-2008 post-election violence? Under what circumstances was he transferred to the Ministry of Gender at the height of the violence? Francis Ndegwa Mohoro. Did the Commission investigate his alleged role in the stolen DRC uh, goal that President Kabila came to look for? Contempt of court accusations and drug dealing. And finally, uh, Samuel Arachi. Did the Commission investigate serious accusations of ethnic favorism and corruption raised against him during the interviews? In view of these concerns, we wish to bring to the attention of the uh, of appointing authority the High Court, uh, the High Court three judge, judge bench uh, pronouncement in the case against appointment of Muma Matemu as the chairperson of the Ethics and Integrity Commission. That, and I quote from the High Court, the court will interrogate whether the appointing authority undertook a proper inquiry before pronouncing whether the appointee has reached the constitutional threshold for appointment. In other words, the court will not merely be satisfied by the fact that the appointing process seems to have gone through the procedural hoops. The, we call upon the Parliamentary Committee on Administration of Justice and National Security to engage the public, civil society, and other agencies in undertaking objective research on the recommended candidates before tabling the names in Parliament to ensure that any allegations against them are clearly and transparently addressed. This will ensure that those with questionable records do not assume leadership of the National Police Service.
We wish to state that these recruitments are not ordinary as they seem to be, as they touch on the very heart of the existence of this country. National, uh, that is national security. Even more important, the recruitments are meant to restore the confidence of Kenyans in the National Police Service as the critical core of the country's socio-economic and political stability. It is therefore imperative that the country gets competent, transformational, proactive, and strategic thinkers for these critical positions. In addition, we wish to bring to the attention of the two uh, principles, sorry, I take that again. We therefore call upon His Excellency the President and the Right Honorable Prime Minister and Parliament to consider these important factors in appointing the top command of the National Police Service. We reiterate our earlier call to all Kenyans with any information on the suitability of any recommended candidate to come forward and present it to us, to the Parliamentary Committee on Administration of Justice and National Security, or to Parliament. Information on corruption, human rights violations, among other ills, will particularly help or be useful in further evaluating the recommended candidates. Finally, we strongly urge the National Police Service Commission to expedite the process of vetting all police officers serving in the National Police Service, starting with the top 100 senior officers, as an important process in restoring public confidence in the police service. End of our statement.